Hello everyone, and welcome back to another episode of Alex the Explainer. And today's video is actually going to be the start of a new series. It'll be called Relationships in Nature. Now, why did I choose this name? Well, it's because this new series will be talking about various relationships in nature. There could be predator-prey relationships, symbiotic relationships, or even colony relationships. You know, like beehives. So it's going to be a very interesting, maybe even very long, series. But for the first episode of Relationships in Nature, we're going to be discuss parasitic wasps. Now first, what even is parasitism? Well, parasitism is actually one of three different types of symbiosis, or symbiotic relationships. Symbiosis is a relationship between two animals, who usually live together. A mutualistic symbiotic relationship is where both animals in the relationship are benefited. Commensalism is a type of symbiotic relationship where one animal is benefited, but another animal has, well, no effect. And finally, parasitism is where one animal is benefited, but the other animal is harmed. And this is what I'm talking about when I talk about parasitic wasps. You see, the wasps are actually benefited, and the other member of the relationship which in this case are caterpillars, are actually harmed. You see, there are very different ways for wasps to lay eggs. Usually they do it in a wasp nest. And there's some different types of wasps, well known to be parasitic wasps, who actually sting the caterpillars. What they do is that they inject eggs into the caterpillar's body. These hatch to form the larva. They end to eat away at the caterpillar's body but they actually make sure not to harm any of the caterpillar's vital organs. And then they grow to a point where they had to exit the caterpillar. So, at this time, they would have grown very, very sharp jaws in order to cut through the caterpillar's thick skin. And this process could take a while. Once all wasp larvae are out, they begin spinning a silk cocoon. However, sometimes the caterpillar is actually mind-controlled by such parasitism, and then it actually helps the wasp larva to spin a nice cocoon, and then the caterpillar actually protect the wasp larva and their cocoons from other parasites. Until, of course, the caterpillar would die of starvation. Soon the wasps will actually leave their cocoons, and they'll be now adult wasps, no longer larva. And that is a quick rundown on parasitic wasps. Very spooky. In the next episode, I'll cover a different type of relationship in nature. Ant colonies. It's a very complex one. And so guys, bye guys and stay shrektastic.